Welcome back creative friends. The end of December sees me making male oriented birthday cards and I thought I might share my process with you today for building striped backgrounds. So I love using offcuts of paper as much as I can. I wouldn't say I'm a hoarder. I don't keep every last bit of paper, but I absolutely like using the bits of paper that I do decide to keep for backgrounds. So today I'm going to use an Express It product, which is like a jack paper. So it's double-sided adhesive, but in a sheet. I'm going to attach it to just a white piece of card, and then I'm going to build the striped background and bring a card together. So the way that I like to use this paper, or I think the best way to get it onto the backing card is just to peel back the release sheet, which I always call a transfer sheet, if you've heard me call it that in the past, but that's not actually the name. And then where the sticky is not exposed, I like to line up my paper so that it's nice and square, and then just put my paper, or card it is, down onto the board. And so up here is where the stickiness is exposed. So just bringing a connection point to that top section. So that top section is now now connected to the card. And then it's just a case of pulling this back. And as you pull back, you just push your card. And then this release paper is done with. And your card is covered in double-sided adhesive. So this is the piece of card and this is the adhesive with a release sheet on top of it. It is a good idea to make sure you've got good connection. I can see one little bubble in there. It's not going to be do or die but get as many of those bubbles out of there using a bone folder or run it through your die cutting machine even. And then it's a case of exposing the double sided adhesive onto that card. And in this case, I'm just going to take this off because I know I'm going to use it all today. But you can, if you don't finish your project, you can put your, your trans your release paper, sorry, back on, or you can just keep it to the side and cover up the bits that you don't get to finishing. But today I'm hoping to finish covering this up. So these are just one centimetre strips of card. And I'm just going to build a pattern. So I'm just going to go in one order. These were just cut on my guillotine at one centimetre. I actually did use full pieces of card today, but they were kind of sitting in my reject bin, which means I've taken them to a crop and I've not been I haven't, I have been lazy, I should say, and not put them back where they belong. So they're ready to be used in my opinion. So that's probably nearly as good as a scrap. So I'm just going along and butting up my strips so that there's no room in between the strip next door or as little room as possible. I think it is good to cut these on a guillotine or a cutter so that you get a very straight cut because it is the straight cut that then allows it to butt up nicely. And I'm just gonna keep going with this pattern. As you get closer to the edge, you're going to find that you have more overhang. And when you make these, I tend to make these en masse. So I sit down and I do a whole lot of backgrounds and then they're sitting there in my stash, ready for me to utilize at some stage. So I might not put all the cards together on the day that I make the background strip but making the backgrounds means bringing cards together when you need them in a hurry is a lot easier. All right, I'm just being conscious of keeping them in the lines that I've made them in, but also the fact that I don't wanna run out of long pieces. So I might start coming back over here getting those long pieces on and then I can cut cut pieces off and trim them out as I need to as well. Quite therapeutic 
For boys, I very frequently just use flat strips, but I also love making quilting patterns out of strips of paper. And using this double-sided adhesive sheet just makes the background really flat. You can, of course, just use strips of adhesive. You can use glue, whatever you got really. But I have heaps of double-sided adhesive sheets. I use them for lots of different purposes. Okay, we keep going. Eventually you get to a point where you should really think about trimming these pieces off over here on the side and putting them to use. So if we just trim these ones down at the very least, maybe just some of these longer ones here. And when you're coming back into your pattern over here, you do know that you need, after the cream here, we went blue. And then back to brown, so you can start using the little strips that you've cut off. And then to green. Then to navy. And I do advise you get all up in it and get all the way down into that last little bit. It does make a difference in the end. Okay, so we're coming back over here to this side, finishing off with blue, going back to cream, then into this beigey brownie color and then back to the blue. So you can see there that you're making good use of all of those strips of paper. So in general terms, you're building a background. Yes, you can of course buy pattern papers that are striped like this. But part of the notion here is that you would be using things that you already have in your stash. I sometimes on these strips, get them to a point where I know what I'm going to be using color wise. And then I go and stamp on top of the strip. Some of them I might put through an embossing folder. There's lots of different ways you can bring texture to the top of them with all sorts of paste so that you could have some that are flat and some that are textured. Really, it's quite endless. Also a very good exercise to get young people involved in. It tends to be something that they can comprehend if they're not an experienced crafter or they're really little and not experienced at all yet or they just need something really simple that they can do independently all right so let's push those little scraps to the side and i would at this stage just bring your bone folder over the top so you can see here it was important to get to that edge because there's a tiny little bit of brown on there the edges won't be perfect yet because I've just really roughly cut them off with my scissors. You can, of course, cut those pieces off with your trimmer. Now, I'm going to cut a piece for this card. That's 13.8 by 9.6. So I want the 9.6 to be this way. You can, of course, use your trimmer, but I don't tend to do that. I tend to just line up on my board if I'm just doing one card, make sure it's straight and use the lines on my board to do that cutting. So that was 9.6. And I am going to make two cards out of this, so it will be good to have that second section down the bottom there. Place that to the side for now. And the other measurement was 13.8. 13 13.8 13 Sorry if my head is in the way. Lining it up on my board to that line and then cutting out 13.8. Of course, keeping these little strips is good. You can use those on all sorts of backgrounds as well. And then I think we'll find then 
that this strip, which I might just trim off this edge here because it's looking a little hairy. That might have been one of the edges I cut with the scissors. Okay, that's nicer. A little bit of surgery going on here, people. That's okay. Okay. That little bit did not want to be on the end there. All right. And then I'm going to pop it up. I'm going to take that little bit off the edge because that will really annoy me. Make adjustments as you go, rather than fit everything to a perfect size there, people. Okay. So we've got a nice masculine looking background. I'm going to pop it up on this card here, which I'd previously measured so that it would be perfect to those measurements. So I'm just going to eyeball and cut a strip off the side there. Alrighty, I like to pop up these panels. You could use some leftover chipboard bits. You can do all sorts of things with layering up scraps of cardboard. But in my world, I'm too focused on getting the job done quickly. So I very frequently reach for my foam tape. The Express It brand has release paper that comes off like a dream. So I do tend to use that more than anything else. And then we're going to line that up. So that it's got evenness around the edges. It's coming over here onto this card which I'll probably also now need to trim because that will annoy me if they're not the same size. Let's do that, just eyeballing it. I do use a scalpel and a metal ruler all the time because I find I get exactness with that even though I'm only eyeballing it, but in the general scheme of things, if you're using a cutting board, you won't necessarily always get an exact measurement because they move over time. Just going to use glue on the back of that, pop it onto the card. I'm going to put the stripes this way just because I like it that way. And then this card is for somebody who has a name that starts with W. Pretty sure they don't watch my videos, but we don't want to give it all away. So some little strips of foam tape. This is as real as it gets here, people. I'm not gonna like that that close to the edge, so. Maybe just a little bit down there. All right. Because this card will probably be open and shut quite a few times, I am just going to with the chipboard embellishment, just put a bit of glue on the back of the foam tape there. So I'm going to come to this side and put the W down. Now this was a little well and truly out of my stash W and I've painted it in black gesso and I thought we would come along and choose a star. Let's do that. And this young man is turning 15. So I did think we could put a one and a five on here, bringing this together reasonably quickly. That's way too much glue for this purpose, but what are we doing if we're not using our glue excessively, people? This will need some dry time, of course. 
and I will straighten up the one and the five and get rid of the excess glue. And I'll probably add a couple of gems of some description, but nice way to bring together quick cards, particularly for the teenage boys in your life. Hope this has provided you with some inspiration to use some of your paper strips and certainly to think about double-sided adhesive sheets if you haven't before. Enjoy.